On August 28, 1963, over 250,000 people came together at the National Mall in Washington, D.C. to form one of the most important demonstrations for racial equality in the history of the United States. That day, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his iconic, I Have a Dream speech. With four words, he inspired the nation with his dream of a better future. While the breadth of his speech touched on a variety of issues that plagued Black Americans, his demands of never being satisfied with inequities in housing, policing, and voting echo familiar conversations of our present. Let's examine how Dr. King's words are more relevant today than ever. Maybe the last time you march on Washington. Maybe the last time, but I don't know. We're singing this, this may be the last time. And the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Well, maybe the last time the march. They were signing a promissory note. Well, maybe the last time. This note was a promise at all men. Yes, black men as well as white men. liberty and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today, instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So we've come to cash this check a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. Now is the time. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. Why did you select Levittown to live? We were looking for a place to buy a home. We looked at Levittown, and we liked the homes here. We liked the advantages that Levittown seemed to offer in uh, comparison to other cities. And we understood that it was going to be all white, and we were very happy to buy a home here. The racist housing practices of the past caused a ripple effect that still impacts black and brown families today. But it's easier to show you rather than explain it to you. The goal of the game is to earn as many coins as possible. You will both start with the same amount of coins, and whoever has the most coins at the end of the game wins. You're going to play against our reigning champion. The winner chooses their pawn first. Hey, good luck. I'll take the white pawn. You'll be playing with a black pawn. Take your piece and put it on the board. Because you're playing with the black piece, your home has been redlined. Players of redlined communities are often prevented from receiving the same opportunities and services as their green counterparts. Unlike blue and yellow, even if you get the coins to move to the green district, the rules of the game prevent it. White plays first and will draw from the green deck, and black will draw from the red deck. Yes, a home loan is approved. Home ownership is the quickest way to earn coins in this game. Your turn. Oof, you got denied. Banks consider red line neighborhoods too risky to get a home loan. Home ownership will likely remain outside of your reach for this game. Ah, tax card. The tax revenue from the community upgraded the schools, hospitals, and parks in your neighborhood. Oh, sweet. You got a tax card too. Since it's nearly impossible to refinance and get loans for your neighborhood, the property values of the homes are starting to drop. Lower property values mean fewer taxes to collect, resulting in fewer health, wealth, and education investments. Oh, what does the grocery store card do? A grocery store means healthier foods and more coins for a better quality of life. Looks like you're finally catching a break. 
A factory should bring lots of jobs to the neighborhood. While the factory brings in jobs, this factory will also bring in hazardous waste, causing health problems for your community. That's gonna cost you as well. Awesome. The highway card makes it way easier to connect with the rest of the city. Unfortunately for Black, the highway card affects your neighborhood too. The Red Line neighborhood will lose some homes from the new development and experience more pollution. Okay, I think you get the point. Winning is hard when the deck is stacked against you. People who live in formerly Red Line communities have earned far less personal wealth and experienced higher rates of pollution in their communities than their green counterparts. These practices were unfair, but it's important to learn about history if you want to play a role in shaping the future. Now is the time. satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We, we talk about this all the time, right? Especially with our son. You're going to be a black man. You're going, you're, he's, he's 10. So, and he's, he's small. But my son follows headlines. And he comes to me on a regular basis telling me about stuff in the news. Like, mom, another black man was killed. I said, I know. We didn't have to talk about the context. We didn't have to talk about what we were talking about. I don't think that right now people are looking at him as um, ag aggressive or as um, threatening. But he's going to be, right? We, like, we already know that. We, we we don't have to say if this happens. We can say when this happens. There will be a time when you get pulled over by a cop. I'm not telling you this to scare you. You are my child, and I'm trying to prepare you for what might happen. You are smart and powerful. And through the wrong eyes, that and your skin color can make you appear as a suspect. So when you do get pulled over, I'm going to need you to remember the sound of my voice. Remember the calm in my tone. Remember that you getting home to me safely is all that matters. Is there anything I should know about in the vehicle? I'm going to run your plates. Keep your hands on the wheel. for whoa 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 keep your hands on the wheel breathe your hands are strong hands that you got from your grandfather funny how those things are passed down know that those very hands could be seen as a weapon so keep them on your steering wheel and keep your voice clear and direct you don't want to give them any reason to respond negatively. Sometimes officers react to the possibility of what could happen, not just what is happening. I don't want to scare you, but it's my job to do everything I can to keep you safe. So we, we talk to him on a regular basis, you know, and remind him, like, you're, you're, you're going to be a black man. And that means that you have to you have to decide, you have to make decisions, right? That doesn't mean that you have to do anything, but it means you have to decide when, when, when to be yourself, right? And, and part of that is when you have encounters with, with police officers, decide to come home, decide to make it home that day. And we can, we can deal with anything after the fact. Now is the time.
We cannot be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote. And a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. This right to vote is the basic right without which all others are meaningless. It gives people, people as individuals, control over their own destinies. The right to vote has a long legacy of being attacked. Poll taxes, literacy tests, voter suppression tactics like these are ever evolving. They can make trying to vote feel like chasing a ballot that's just out of reach. When citizens can't vote, the effects on a society can be devastating. It took me three tries to register. Oh yeah, men were lined up with guns in my polling place. It's not fair. I can't afford to miss work to go vote. I had to wait in line for eight hours to vote. It took me three tries. How was my registration rejected again? I need to pay for a new ID to vote. What's the point? Men were lined up with guns at my polling place. I would have to drive 250 miles to get a new ID. Countless cast aside ballots could have changed the fates of so many. When history begins to repeat itself, we must organize, take action, and make a change. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day, this will be the day when all of God's children be able to sing with new meaning, my country tears of thee. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring. From the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania, let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. Let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, God Almighty, we are free at last. The hard-earned rights fought for by those who came before us are not guaranteed. With each generation, the path to progress must be repaved. Now it's up to you to decide how the next stones of hope are laid.